thanks Arm & Hammer Sensitive Skin Free & Clear for sponsoring this video. You guys know I'm a huge fan of Arm & Hammer Sensitive Skin Free & Clear detergent. It's perfect if you have sensitive skin. A lot of people with sensitive skin aren't aware of the fact that their laundry detergent may be a huge culprit. Yeah, things like fragrance and dyes in your laundry detergent can end up transferring from your clothing to your skin, leading to itch, worsening your sensitivity. And you guys always ask me what laundry detergent I use and recommend. Arm & Hammer Sensitive Skin Free & Clear for sure. It's a perfect choice for people with sensitive skin. It's certified by SkinSafe. If you're not familiar with SkinSafe, it was developed in collaboration with the Mayo Clinic and uses clinical ingredient data to help people with sensitive skin choose products that are good for their sensitive skin and avoid those that are not. Arm & Hammer Sensitive Skin Free & Clear has earned a 100% rating from SkinSafe because it's made to be gentle on the skin and it excludes 100% of the top most considered skin allergens. SkinSafe's mission is to help people with sensitive skin find the best in class products through AI powered science, patch testing data, and ingredient based product recommendations. Arm & Hammer Sensitive Skin Free & Clear liquid detergent is free of fragrance, it's free of dyes, and it's free of preservatives. So it's really gentle on sensitive skin, but tough on dirt. You can be certain that Arm & Hammer Sensitive Skin Free & Clear laundry detergent is gonna be good for your sensitive skin. Products are verified by healthcare professionals, tested by dermatologists, and they have to pass four clinical tests. So you can be confident that Arm & Hammer Sensitive Skin Free & Clear detergent is gonna be great for your sensitive skin. Go ahead and click the link below or go to www.armandhammer.com slash laundry slash sensitive skin to purchase Sensitive Skin Free & Clear laundry detergent. So thank you Arm & Hammer Sensitive Skin Free & Clear laundry detergent for sponsoring today's video. Well, hey guys, I'm headed to the grocery store and I got in the car, I was pulling out and I realized I did not have my phone. So I had to go back and get my phone because you know the one time you forget your phone, it's gonna be the one time that, God forbid, you have a flat tire or something happens and you need your phone. Although, what did we do in the days before cell phones? Do you guys remember when there was the car phone? Do you remember those? It was like, it was like this book that you pulled out and it had like a big zipper. <laughs> I remember a friend of mine had one of those in their car and I just thought they were, they must be rich. <laughs> I'm listening to a book, an audio book that is a nonfiction book and the band played on by Randy Schultz. It's really good. It's about the HIV epidemic when it all started and you know all the it's, it's crazy like I don't know I guess I'm getting in my wiser years because the 80s doesn't seem like that long ago and I can remember a lot of this stuff going on and it's just crazy that that much time has elapsed but honestly I highly recommend listening to this book because or reading it because it will put everything that's going on in the world kind of I don't know it gives you a, at least a little bit of hope in the sense that what they were dealing with in the 80s when this all when the HIV epidemic was a big enigma and they didn't know what the heck it was and you know we're trying to figure out the cause and the treatments and everything and now fast forward to today or shoot even in the even in the 90s I mean I would never want to have anybody you know I would never wish that disease on anybody we have really good treatments now and we know exactly how it's transmitted um, we know how to prevent acquiring it I mean back then people were getting it from blood transfusions because we didn't know about about it and it's just crazy how how fast research was able to catch up to everything and figure it out but anyways listening to this book you know I've got to say it's very unsettling some of the some of the stuff that was going on at the time as far as the way certain officials and science scientists and scientific you know kind of entities approached the research or you know backed away from doing the research they were like well there's no prestige in studying this disease that's presenting in people there's no prestige in that there's no funding in that there's no you know dermatology played a major role in a lot of in a lot of the characterization of what unfolded what unfolds when your immune system basically shuts down from that virus because patients with uncontrolled HIV they get 
opportunistic infections, which more often than not have these very striking skin manifestations. And they also get um, tumor, you know, they get cancers because you lose tumor, tumor surveillance, you lose cancer immune, you know, your immune system is critical for keeping cancer and viruses in check. And anyways, so a lot of these bizarre, rare infections were presenting at that time. They're called opportunistic infections. But, um, and, and dermatologists were really at the forefront of characterizing a lot of those things. I mean, a lot of the people that I trained under were like pioneers in the field of, of AIDS research. And it's just crazy to think how far we've come from what I'm listening to here. Oh man, they are really doing a lot of tearing up the roads around here these days. Uh. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm listening to that, but I need to go to the library and get myself a reading book book. I haven't been to the library since the last time we went. Actually, my registration expires this month, so I need to get the inspection taken care of. I'm just hoping there's not a long wait. <laughs> I think there's like a bookstore nearby that I might be able to walk to, but it's kind of threatening to sprinkle. All right, so my car is going to be inspected. It's gonna take about 45 minutes, so I'm going to maybe find a coffee shop. All right, good news. I passed my inspection. Anyways, I was gonna get my car washed, but we're getting the rain drizzled now. So I think I'm gonna squash that, but I'm gonna head on over to the library. Return my library books, and I'm in here perusing for a new book. And I always draw a blank as to what your recommendations are, because you guys leave me good book recommendations. I'm really enjoying And the Band Played, played On. It should almost be required reading, I feel. It's quite good. Eye-opening. cookbook that has really good photographs that makes you want to make the recipes and use the book all the more. If the book doesn't have good images, then I don't know. Speaking of recipes, these are some chickpea pumpkin muffins that I've made before. I'll put the recipe down below, but they're just great to have on hand for the week as a little on-the-go snack. I just went for a run and I did my stretching afterwards, and I have to say I've been really diligent about stretching after my runs over the past, I want to say three or four months, several months now, and I can feel a huge difference in the flexibility of my hamstrings. They were getting really tight there, just, you know, from being on my feet all day plus running and then not stretching for so long, they were getting really tight and they're, they're loosening up. Those resistance bands really help, <clears throat> really help a lot. Anyways, I'm going to hop in the shower, but I wanted to share with you guys while I was um, out today, I don't know if you can see, I got a little mosquito bite. And I get questions from you guys from time to time. Why is it that some people get mosquito bites and other people don't? Or some people have really exuberant reactions to bug bites. It has to do with differences in people's immune systems. Children, for example, they can have really robust responses to bug bites and then of course they're more likely to scratch if they play outside a lot and their fingers aren't exactly you know sterile which they're not they can inoculate <clears throat> bacteria into them that 
makes them more inflamed, can even cause a superficial skin infection called impetigo on them. But some people, just their, the, the way their immune system is and their, their immune system's memory for, you know, mosquito saliva or other bugs that might bite you, is just more robust than other people's. But people who are undergoing um, cancer treatment, especially for like lymphoma, they notoriously have these like shocking responses to bug bites. I mean, it's just like in your face, really, I mean, big blisters and everything. People in the, will go to the ER for these responses to bug bites and people in the ER who aren't familiar with this type of response to a bug bite will think, you know, they're having a really emergent rash or something. They'll call a Durham console and be like, yes, bug bites. <laughs> they're like, what? Are you serious? Are you kidding me? It's like, no, this is how they are. Fire ants, they bite differently. They are vicious. Those, those, those bad boys can crawl and boy, they can be deadly. They swarm, yeah. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna take a shower, wrap up the vlog here. Thank you so much for coming along with me today. I had a really fun day just hanging out with you guys, running errands. I'm glad I got my oil changed and I'm glad that I was able to go to the library. I did get some good books, always a win. And thank you so much Arm & Hammer for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are in the market for a good detergent that's perfect for sensitive skin, definitely check them out. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.